In today's video, we are going to be introducing our dogs to what is known as leash pressure. So leash pressure is not what you're thinking. It doesn't mean that we're always using force to get our dogs to do a behavior. Although sometimes we might, it's a good way to teach our dogs that commands are mandatory, but this also gives us the ability to unlock what I like to call teachable moments. So what a teachable moment is, it's when our dogs are doing a behavior that's not dangerous or destructive, it's not based on fear or aggression, it's just something we don't want them to do. Two good examples would be boundaries or breaking the stay. When I'm teaching a dog the stay command, or I'm also teaching them boundaries, I start with, again, what I call teachable moment. And the rules that I like to follow for a teachable moment is, number one, when the dog does the behavior that I don't want, let's say they break the stay or they violate the boundary, a good example is jumping up on the sofa or maybe entering the kitchen. I don't let my dogs in the kitchen. So the moment they enter the kitchen or the moment they jump up on the sofa or the moment they break the stay, I say wrong. Then I take the leash that I've used to teach the dog leash pressure and I guide them back into the position I want them to be. So if the dog breaks the stay, what do I want them to do? I want them to go back into the stay. If the dog jumps on the sofa, if that is a rule in your house, and I say wrong, what do I want the dog to do? I want them off of the sofa. If the dog walks into the kitchen, I say wrong, what do I want them to do? I want them to leave the kitchen. So this gives me the ability to get the dog to do the behavior that I want, and then I praise them once they're doing the correct behavior, but I don't give them a reward. And the reason why is because a teachable moment, we are being reactive to the dog. The dog breaks the stay and we are reacting to them. And if the dog learns how to trigger a sequence of events that ends up with them getting a reward, they will continue to do it. So if the dog breaks the stay and I say wrong and I put him back in the stay and then I go, good dog, and I give him a treat, the dog goes, ah, you want me to break the stay so you can say wrong so you can put me back in the stay and I can get a treat. So that's why I just provide verbal praise. Now you might be asking yourself, if you're having the dog do an action, why not just say the command of the behavior you want the dog to perform? When the dog jumps up on the sofa, I could say off. When the dog jumps up on a person, I can say off. When the dog enters the kitchen, I can say exit. When the dog breaks the stay, I can say the stay command that they just broke. The reason why I don't do that is because I'm terrible at it. Meaning, when the dog breaks the position or when the dog jumps up on the sofa and I'm not ready for it, I find myself doing something like this. Down, I mean sit, I mean off. Ah, I messed that one up. So instead of doing that, I just say wrong. So wrong becomes my reverse your behavior and it's a very clear and easy way to communicate with our dog. So when I say wrong, I'm not punishing a dog, I'm implementing a reinforcement event. I'm having them do a specific behavior. But in order to do this, we have to teach our dogs leash pressure. And so what I like to do is I want my dog to understand to follow the leash regardless of what direction that I pull it. And our dogs have what's known as a classical opposition reflex. When you pull on the leash, your dog is naturally going to resist. We're gonna teach them to go with that pressure instead of resisting. And the way that we do that is we're going to be utilizing the food lure that we taught our dogs earlier. When we start to apply pressure on a dog, we're using negative reinforcement. We're getting the dog to perform a behavior in order to turn off pressure. So it's to encourage the repeat of the behavior and the negative is the removal of the pressure. Two things must take place when we're using negative reinforcement in order for it to work. Number one, once the pressure is turned on, it cannot be turned off until the dog complies. And number two, the moment the dog complies, it has to instantly be turned off. So you have to be very aware of the pressure when you're working with your dog. Now, this used to be considered a mildly stressful exercise, but we've learned over time that we can remove all the stress by simply giving our dog the answer to the problem. Because when we turn on leash pressure, if we're following the rules that we can't turn it off until the dog complies, we are presenting a problem to our dog. We're saying, hey, here's a problem. Can you figure out the solution? And if we don't give the dog the solution, it can become very stressful. So instead, we simply give them the solution. And the way that I do, and you're gonna see this with Maverick, 
I put the food behind my back. I apply a little bit of leash pressure, just enough for them to feel it, not enough to be choking them or forcing them to do it. Just if I'm getting the dog to sit, I lift up so they feel a little bit of pressure. If I want them to lay down, I'll pull down. They feel a little bit of pressure behind the back of their head. So I apply the pressure. Once the dog feels the pressure, I bring out the food lure. I lure the dog into the position. I turn off the pressure and I give the dog the food. So I'm providing the answer to the problem or the solution to the problem every time that it's presented. Also, I want my dog to see what I'm doing before I do it. A common mistake people make is they'll grab the leash behind the dog and they'll just lift it up and the dog can't see what's going on with the leash. So it goes from loose to tight instantly and it surprises the dog. So they have no way to prevent the pressure from even happening. And I want a dog to know how to prevent the pressure from ever happening. And the way that I do that, imagine you're the dog and the leash is hanging. I'll bring it up directly in front of the dog's face so they can see. And at first they're like, huh, this is interesting. And then they feel it get tight and then I have them sit and the pressure's turned off and they go, oh, okay. So then I start to lift the leash and the dog sits instantly. And for a more advanced leash pressure cue, what I like to do is I will hold the leash in my hand when I have the dog in front of me. And I'll show you guys this with Ari since she's really well trained on leash pressure. I'll slide my hand down the leash and the dog will lay down right away. Or if I want my dog to sit, I'll slide up the leash. Now notice my left hand is not moving. It's my right hand that's sliding down or sliding up. And before the leash gets tight, the dog will perform the behaviors because they've learned the pattern. Same thing if I want my dog to move left or right, I'll guide my dog just like this and my dog will see the way that I'm moving and she'll go, oh, I know what you're doing. And she'll follow the leash in those directions. And this helps us implementing teachable moments, which helps us teach the stay and it helps us teach our dog boundaries with very little, if any, conflict at all. So let's get out Maverick and get started. All right, so we got a little Maverick here. So again, I'm gonna grab a piece of food so I'm ready. Now, in the beginning, he's probably not gonna see the leash, but later on, we want them to see it. So I'm gonna take the food and I'm going to put it behind my back and I'm gonna apply a little bit of pressure down. Then I'm gonna lure him down, turn off the pressure, give him the reward. Very good, buddy. Excellent, put the food behind my back, lift up, lure up. Once he sits all the way. So he's more focused on the food than even the pressure. So there's the pressure, let's lift. Turn off the pressure, give him the reward, very nice. I'm gonna switch hands. So now I'm gonna pull down on this side, get the food lure, lure him into the down, Turn off the pressure, give them the reward. I'm gonna lift up, lure. Turn off the pressure, give him the reward. And he's jumping up to grab at my hands because I also taught him that. <laughs> so I taught him this. <laughs> and that's kind of what we're seeing right now. Okay. So again, put the food behind my back, apply the pressure, do the food lure, release the pressure, Give the dog the reward, switch hands. Bring the leash up, lift up, turn off the pressure, give him the reward. Very nice, buddy. There's the pressure, there's the lure, release the pressure, give him the food. Excellent, good boy. Oh, and he's already sitting. Good job, buddy. There's the pressure, there's the lure, release, reward. Very nice. Now I'm gonna lift up, he's already sitting, so I'm gonna go back into the down, there's the pressure, there's the food lure, release the pressure, reward, very good. Excellent. There's the pressure, there's the lure, turn off the pressure, give the reward. Very good, my little man, you're so smart. You're such a good dog. This guy's awesome. I really like this dog. Okay, there's the pressure. There's the lure, very nice. And you can see, he's, this is real time. I haven't done leash pressure with him at all. When your timing is correct and you're consistent with your cues, your dogs learn very, very quickly. One of the most common mistakes people make with leash pressure is they don't turn the pressure off when the dog complies. So you have to make sure that that pressure is turned off the moment the dog complies. Super important. So now that he's starting to understand what we're doing, he can start to see the leash that I was talking about before. 
before it gets tight. So there's the pressure, there's the lure, release, reward. So now he's able to see the leash moving up, even though he's not looking at it. There's the pressure, lure, release, and then I can give him the food. I was waiting for him to put his butt down. He had a little bit of a hover butt, and that's my fault too. You'll notice certain things that your dog will do. It's often because we as the handlers have made mistakes, and I noticed in some of the other videos that I was releasing him before his butt was all the way down, and that can cause that what I like to call hover butt. There's the pressure. Very good. So he got that one. Nice job, and he can pop his butt up once I go to reward him. There's the pressure. There's the lure. Turn off the pressure. Give him the reward. Excellent. You're so good, buddy. And you see there's no stress associated with it. There's the pressure. There's the lure. And I would do this every day for, I don't know, a couple days to a week, depending on the dog. And most dogs will start to figure it out very, very quickly. Now, you can make the dog do it if you needed a dog to learn leash pressure quickly, let's say you're training a shelter dog for a local shelter and you have to teach the dog very quickly. Once I get the dog to understand this concept and maybe I've done it for five minutes or so, then what I'll do is I'll just turn on the pressure and I'll wait for the dog to figure it out. Meaning I would start the pressure like this and I'll just wait. I'm not pulling hard, but I would just wait. And then eventually the dog will figure it out. But if you have time, if you're not on a tight schedule, then don't rush this. Just do a session every day. And before you know it, your dog will be following the leash very well. And you're not gonna have any stress associated with it because you took your time. There's the pressure. And even if you do have to do it quickly, like I have done that before, I was training a dog for a rescue or a shelter or even a stay in train. I used to do um, two week stay in trains, which I don't do that anymore. All my programs are mission based, they're not time based to prevent things like that. But when I would have to train a dog very quickly, I would teach leash pressure completely in one session. So then I would apply the pressure. It's like, okay, I've done enough reps and I would just wait the dog out. And they wouldn't get stressed. It would just take a moment for them to figure it out. I mean, he might actually do it. I'll give it another maybe 20 seconds to see if he does it. And he's just messing around with the food. And since we're not pulling very hard, as I said, there's really no stress. He's able to lift his head up, see how he can pull it up. I'm not forcefully pulling him down. So he's not figuring it out. He got a little distracted. That happens. So then I'm just going to help him release and reward. Very good. Once I get the dog understanding it and uh, they know how it looks from the down or when I'm on the ground with them. And the reason why I start down here, by the way, is because I'm trying to remove any pressure. So I don't, and what I mean by pressure, I mean pressure that me as the handler could be making. When we're standing over a dog and we're applying pressure with the leash, just this picture can become a little bit stressful for some dogs. So I always get down on their level. Now he is my own dog, so we have a really great relationship and I could start standing just fine. But with a lot of dogs, if I'm training someone else's dog, I always get down at their level. Even though one of the first steps that I do with every dog is I build a relationship, I bond with the dog, I always get down on their level because I don't want any stress associated with the training at all. Unless the dog's aggressive and you're worried about them biting you, then of course you don't wanna put your face next to them. So then once I get them doing that, I can start doing it while we're standing. And the same rules apply. And this is where I start showing the dog the picture of sliding my hand down the leash. So you see how he's looking at it? I slide my hand down, I apply the pressure, then I lure the dog into the down, release the pressure and reward. Now I'm gonna bring out Ari because I want you to see how it looks when the dog fully understands and the goal that we should have when we're teaching our dog leash pressure. So I'm gonna continue doing this with him and in a week he'll be doing it just as good as Ari does it now and I'm gonna show you how that looks. So let's get out Ari. All right, so now we have Ari out. I'm gonna show you four basic movements, left movement, right movement, down and sit. And I'm gonna show you that cue that I was talking about. So I hold the leash in my left hand. I'm gonna take my right hand and slide down the leash and you're gonna see she's gonna lay down. Once she lays down, I'm gonna use her terminal marker, F-R-E-E, -E, and I'm gonna give her a piece of food. So here we go. Free. So you can see that becomes a cue 
to get them to do a behavior just like any other cue that we teach our dogs. Now here's the other one, free. And she can see it the moment I start to move my hand. And the way that I taught it was initially when I start, I have to go all the way down the leash. And then with the sit one, I have to go all the way up. But once they figure out that pattern, free. <laughs> she wants me to pay her. <laughs> I always pay my dogs. I'm not the type of person who's like, my dog should just listen because I said so. I always pay them. So now we're going to do the left and right lateral movements. I like to use something like a bed. Sorry, puppy's excited. He wants to train like a, a bed because it gives the dog a target. Now I teach them if I move with just my left hand opposite of where the dog is to get them to move in the direction of my left hand. So I can do this free and reward that. But what I usually will do is I will guide with my hand that's closest to the dog. So that's the goal when we're teaching our dog leash pressure. This isn't something where we are forcing our dogs. Now, of course, there may be a time where you tell your dog to do something and your dog just doesn't want to do it. And we can follow through and we can make them do it with the leash pressure. So they understand when we give them a command, they have to comply. And that's often for safety reasons. If you have your dog out in public and you need to get your dog to come to you or to sit or whatever. We want our dog's obedience to be reliable and using the leash can often help with that. So it helps teach dogs that commands are mandatory. It helps remove the treat from the pitcher. When we're using a food lure, the food's right in front of the dog's face. But when we use leash pressure, we can get them to perform the behaviors without the food and it helps us teach the stay and teach our dog boundaries. So this is super valuable. I teach every single dog that I train the concept of leash pressure, and I recommend you do the same. You will enjoy the results, I promise. We'll see you guys in the next one.